LocalStack, a way for you to learn and test tools like Terraform, Plumi, and AWS CLI so you can make that cloud engineer money without having to fund Uncle Jeff's next mission to the edge of space. Because you guys paid for all of this. LocalStack is a cloud service emulator that runs in a container, allowing you to simulate AWS on your local machine. This means you can test provisioning resources without it costing you a cent, no matter how much those resources cost. This is a great way for those learning and experimenting with AWS to get the practical experience they need. But there's more to LocalStack than being a playground to help you experiment with the latest provisioning tools. It's also something that companies are looking to have their engineers experience with so they can implement it into their continuous integration pipelines. With LocalStack, every time infrastructure code is committed to a repo, your pipeline can test provisioning it on LocalStack, immediately alerting you to any issues. Getting started with LocalStack is simple. Since it's a containerized application, you can have LocalStack running with a single Docker run command, no matter if you're running macOS, Linux, or Windows. Once you have the container up and running, interacting with LocalStack is as easy as adding a parameter to your AWS CLI commands or adding a few extra details to your Terraform provider. In this video, I'm going to show you from start to finish how to get started with LocalStack and how to interact with it using the AWS CLI as well as Terraform. All right, so here is my quick start guide with uh, getting started with LocalStack. Uh, first of all, you can go to the local stack website and go to integrations and it sort of has a help section for each of the integrations that work with local stack. And then uh, down here you have two installation options. So the first installation option is to just install local stack using Python. And then once you have local stack installed, uh, you just do a local stack start and that's going to start the Docker container for local stack. Uh, this works pretty well on Mac OS, but I ran into some issues doing this on Windows. So if you're on Windows, the best option is to just do a Docker run and then uh, set up local stack. So here's the command right here. I'll add it in the description so you guys can run the same thing and just copy and paste it. But it's basically just doing the same thing as uh, this up here. But in the end, all it's really doing is starting a Docker container. All right, so one pre-requirement for getting this working is, of course, to have a Docker environment since it's running a Docker container. So if you're on Mac or Windows, I suggest getting Docker Desktop, and uh, this will be enough to allow you to get it. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this into my clipboard and go into a shell here and paste it in. And what this is going to do is go and download the local stack image and run the Docker container. So I'll do that. I think I have a lot of these things cached. Oh no, it looks like it's downloading. And uh, it should take just like a minute and then we'll see it come up here. All right, so you can see that uh, local stack is, uh, you can see the logs coming out here. So it's running and it's running on port 4566. In my Docker desktop, you can see it downloaded the image. And if you go to containers slash apps, you can see the container there running. And the same thing here, just the logs. So now that it's up and running, let's go ahead and interact with it. Since this is emulating AWS, the best way to sort of test it out, in my opinion, is to use the AWS CLI. So let's hop back into Visual Studio Code. And you have two options here when it comes to AWS CLI. First option is to do a pip install, AWS local dash CLI. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to provide you with an AWS local binary. And this is just a wrapper around the original AWS CLI that points it to local stack. Now, if you want to just use the original AWS CLI, the same one that you would use to interact with your production environments on the AWS cloud, then you just need to add this dash dash endpoint URL and point it to local stack. So this is the way that I do it. I don't really use this AWS local one. It gives me a bit of trouble on Windows. And I think you can actually add this to your AWS config file under a profile and get it working that way. So you can just reference a profile to local stack. And that's probably the best way to do it. Let me know in the comments below if you get that working. Uh, but for the rest of us, let's just do it this way. 
point to our endpoint. And for this command, we're going to create a bucket here. So I'm going to create a bucket called my bucket. And uh, let's paste it in. And you can see that a bucket was created. Let's create a second one. And then let's uh, list the buckets. So I think it's just list dash buckets. And this is going to return a list of buckets. So there you have it. We have two buckets created. And this is created on local stack. This isn't created on AWS at all. So this is completely virtualized on our local machine. Now, one thing I need to mention, because it's always the first question I get on local stack, is that local stack is just an emulation product. So everything that we create, like for example, we're creating buckets here, and up next we're going to create some EC2 instances. You can't actually use these resources. We're just emulating the creation of them just to test our applications like Terraform and AWS CLI. And if you wanted to create like Python scripts to provision stuff, that's what local stack is for. All right, so let's go ahead and hop back into Visual Studio Code. And now we're going to have a look at Terraform and how we can use Terraform with local stack. So I have a Terraform configuration here. And you can see it's a pretty simple Terraform configuration. Basically, we're pointing to AWS and uh, we're creating a T2 micro instance. Now, all we have to do to point this to local stack is change this provider option. We're still going to use AWS, but we're going to point to local stack. So the way that we do this is uh, we just take this configuration that I got from the local stack website, and I'm going to replace this block here and paste in this. And as you can see, it's just using uh, for the access key, secret key It's just using tests. You can set the region to whatever you want. There's a couple settings here as well. And then you can see for each of the AWS services, it's pointing to local stack. So this is what you're going to want to set to get Terraform to use local stack. And uh, we're going to do a Terraform init. And we want to type Terraform correctly. So we'll correct that. Uh, I've already initialized this as I prepared this video. But if you downloaded this from my GitHub in the description, you're going to want to do a Terraform init to get everything that Terraform requires. The next thing you want to do is do Terraform apply. And there's no configuration files. And the issue here is I'm in the wrong directory. So let's go into the Terraform directory. And then we're going to do Terraform init. And now you can see the Terraform init worked. And uh, after that, we're going to do a Terraform apply. And we're going to see this scroll for quite a while as it's telling us every single EC2 instance that it's going to provision. So there's a hundred of them. It's my uh, terminal is just going to take a while to catch up here. And so it got to the end here. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And uh, it's going to go ahead and provision everything. Now, if you're following along, you might want to just do one instance just to make sure that it's working and going to local stack as you think it is. You don't really want to provision 100 EC2 instances on AWS. So this is going to take just about a minute. It, since everything's virtualized, it happens pretty quickly. It's not actually creating any virtual machines here. So let's uh, open another prompt here. And I'm going to go to my readme here. And then I'm going to scroll down here. And I have this get list of EC2 instances. So I'm going to use this. And this is going to print out a pretty table of all the EC2 instances that it has created. So let's go ahead and paste that here. And the problem here is I'm using command prompt and not a PowerShell. So let's fix that and paste it in. And that worked a lot better. So we'll scroll up. You can see that uh, it's not in order here, but you can see that it looks like it provisioned about 100 servers. And it gives you all the information you need on it. 
So this is just a great way to go in, learn tools like Terraform, or just let learn AWS. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video and I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below if you haven't already. Your comments really help motivate me to keep creating this content. Also, don't forget to check out the local stack website, where it has details on all the integrations and AWS services that it supports. That's it for this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.